Hey everyone, Ray here from TTP Laser, and today we're going to do a video, a long overdue video. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. Uh, we're going to do a video on third mirror alignment. Third mirror alignment is probably your most important mirror to have aligned perfectly. Uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get yourself some kinetic sand or some Play-Doh. I personally prefer the kinetic sand because it lasts forever. Play-Doh will dry out and you'll have to replace it. So uh, you can get either of those from Walmart, toy department, or probably any toy store. Um, they're widely available, not hard to get. And um, get ready, let's get started. Alright, so here we have our, um, I'm going to use kinetic sand, if you want to use Play-Doh that's fine. So take your pill bottle and go ahead and fill it up and pack it in there really good. Um, once you have it packed in, you can take it upside down and put it on a flat counter and get yourself a nice smooth flat finish. That will do, it's a little bit, not 100% flat but it doesn't have to be. And from here we're going to go over to the laser machine and turn your laser machine off. For this you're going to want to not have air blowing. Uh, if you have air blowing you're just going to end up blowing the sand everywhere or uh, drying out the uh, play-doh. So let's just turn the laser machine on without air. Okay, let's go ahead and move our laser head over to the front of the machine. Keep it relatively close so that you can see what's happening without having to lean over to the center of the machine. Take your kinetic sand or Play-Doh, put it directly underneath the laser head. And now what I suggest you do is you put a file into your controller, a small file, um, like one inch by one inch, and hit your origin button. Now the reason we're going to do that is because once we make a mark, uh, rather than taking the pill bottle out, we're going to leave that right where it is. We're just going to move our laser head out of the way, have a look to see what our test results came back at, and to get the laser head back exactly where it was, you can just press your frame button, and it will come back and be exactly on the same spot. So, now what I want you to do is one of two things. You can either raise your Z-table uh, automatically, or what I often like to do is loosen my lens tube and I just drop it on top and make a small indentation in the sand. And tighten that back up. Try to keep it approximately, it doesn't have to be exact, but someplace close to where you think would be the proper, proper focus distance. Now, I don't know if you can see this here. There is a circle. Uh, you have a big circle and then a smaller mound in the center of it. That mound is the hole in your nozzle. So we would put that there and we would go ahead and pulse the laser. Of course now I've moved the kinetic sand so this is not going to be accurate. Now that put a little pin dot in there if you can see it again. And that pin dot simply needs to be perfectly in the center of the center hole. The center hole is actually quite small, so you don't have a lot of room for error. You really, really want to make sure that you get that burn mark directly in the center. Okay, so now that you uh, know where your mark is, now we're going to try to correct it. So I've made a little uh, dummy thing here. This, by the way, is my identification. Anybody that knows me, friends, family, acquaintances, anybody on the street knows I'm addicted to juicy fruit gum. Uh, there's actually a little story to go with that. This is a true story. When I was actually from my youngest age, the youngest that I could ever remember, three years old, um, I used to visit my grandfather, my grandparents every day. And my grandfather, every day, would walk to the store and buy a package of juicy fruit gum. 
he'd come home, he would sit me down on his lap, he'd give me a stick of gum, and he would give me a horsey ride on his lap. Now I actually believed that for a lot of years. Uh, later in life I realized that he actually had Parkinson's disease and he really wasn't giving me a horsey ride, but to this day I still chew juicy fruit gum on a regular basis. Anyways, back to work. So let's imagine, and I'm, I'm doing this, I could tell you turn this left, turn this right, but this sometimes just helps people to understand how the mirrors work. And this is for number one mirror, number two mirror, whatever. So you've got your beam, this pen here will be your beam shooting down, and this is the mirror underneath here. So if you try to imagine, uh, say for example you want your beam to move towards this side. Simply raise this and it moves that way. It's like a flashlight. If you want to tilt it, uh, your, so your beam goes this way, just lift this side so your beam goes that way. Um, so from here we're going to go back to the machine now and I'm going to show it to you on the laser machine. Alright, on the top of your laser head you have um, a plate that's mounted separate from the head. Uh, imagine that plate is a package of juicy fruit gum, if you will, and your beam is shooting straight down. This in here is your third mirror. Now, on that plate, you've got two silver Allen screws with springs on it. You don't want to over-tighten those springs, but you want to make sure that there's enough tension on it that you have some flex in the uh, top plate of the laser head. Now, you've got three adjustment screws, one, two, three... Each one has a locking nut. A common mistake is that people don't tighten those locking nuts up when they're done, and with the head shaking back and forth, moving around, your third mirror becomes unaligned. So once you have it perfectly aligned, you want to make sure that you tighten those up really nicely. Don't over-tighten, but uh, hand-tighten I don't find to be sufficient. I like to take a pair of needle-nose pliers and give them just a little bit of a... Uh, just a little bit of a turn, just to make sure that they're snug. Now, now, like I said, imagine this is your juicy fruit gum. So, when you tighten the screw, it's going to push in and it's going to draw the plate upwards. This applies to all three of them. So, if you wanted to move your laser beam, uh, say, in this case, left or right, you're going to turn this screw, it will raise or lower the bottom. Turning the screw clockwise will bring up the back end, which brings your beam to the right. Counterclockwise, loosening it, brings it down and will bring your beam to the left. The top two, same thing. Turning, uh, turning the screw clockwise will bring the beam to the back. Turning it counterclockwise will turn it to the front of the laser machine. So how do you know if your third mirror is out? There's a couple of ways I'm going to show you to check. Um, one way is obviously to look at your look at your pieces, cut a piece of wood, and let's take a look at the angle of the cut. The angle, well, it should be square. If it has a slight angle to it, then there's a good chance that your third mirror is not aligned. Uh, the other possibility is you're using the wrong size lens for the thickness of the material. But if you're using the right size lens and it's not perfectly square, then your third mirror is out of alignment. Sometimes if you have a thick piece of acrylic, uh, you can actually see the beam as it shoots through the acrylic and you can tell that way if your beam is coming down at an angle or if it's straight. Let's go over to the laser machine and I'm going to show you a few more ways. So here in the laser machine, we're going to focus our, uh, focus our lens to the material. And what I want you to do is fire a pulse, make sure your air is on. So there, we have fired a pulse. Now we're going to take a look at the pulse mark. My laser is meticulously aligned, so... You may not see it on my machine because my dot, and this is a 63.5 lens, so that 
dot probably looks a lot bigger on yours if you're not perfectly aligned. But what's important here to tell if your mirror is aligned or not is that this dot is circle. If this dot is at all angled, that means your third mirror is out of alignment. Next way that you can check is with the laser focused, fire the pulse and lower your bed about an inch. Don't move the material, don't move your laser head and fire the pulse again. Now, those two dots should line up perfectly. If they do not line up perfectly, your mirror, uh, your third mirror is out of alignment. Some really good telltale signs of uh, your mirror being out is uh, if you go ahead and you just uh, engrave something like a figure eight and you notice a shadow line in certain parts like this, that means that your beam is probably hitting the tube itself. Uh, part of the beam is going through the hole, part of it is hitting the hole and reflecting off. <coughs> uh, a good way to check also is to run your laser machine, do a run and design for about a minute and then just feel the edge of your nozzle and see if it's warm. Your nozzle should always be room temperature, it should never get warm. If it gets warm, that means that your beam is hitting the nozzle at some point. So that will conclude our video on third mirror alignment. Uh, one thing that I need to stress is that we are trained professionals. <laughs> always close your lid when you pulse your laser machine. Always. Um, your eyes depend on it and <laughs> other body parts. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And uh, hopefully we can get more videos out to you guys.